I, I don't mind either. Okay, so then I'll look at both of them and uh, select one or the other for tomorrow. Are there any questions so far? Okay. Yeah. The next one on the list is the program. And so, uh, Raj, is it possible for you to pull up from um, page number five and six from the suggested guide for anger management facilitators? The facilitators, is that it? I can't see. Or did you receive that? Is is that in the material that you have? That's actually a book and we can we can work around it. It's okay. So then uh, I have it and so you'll just have to use yeah, it. That is right. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Then I have it in uh, front of me. And what I would tell you is that this is one that we can send you that you can download. But the page that I was referring to initially was page number four. And so what I'd like to do is read to you how we define or describe our anger management program. So we start off on page number four the program. Anger management intervention begins with the initial contact with the agency or provider. Potential participants should be informed at the outset that the program is court or employee ordered, that the number of sessions has been determined by the referring source, that participation demands motivation to cooperate and work with the group facilitator, that participants should be asked to bring copies of the court order to their first appointment. Yeah, that's it. Raj, can you get it then? Number four, yeah. Okay, Donna. Oh, no, it's Diane? Okay. Yes. Let me finish this page. I'm going to ask you to help me out a lot, Diane. But right now, I'm going to go back to, I said, participants should be asked to bring copies of the court order to their first appointment. Volunteer clients should be encouraged to attend an introductory class. Emphasis for all participants should be placed on the bar on EQI 2.0 assessment component. So you all know what that is because it's the same thing that you took. But let me focus on the other things for just a second. One, it is important that you know in advance that if your goal is to make income, from providing these services, it's in your best interest to, um, at some point, get a list or begin de uh, developing a list of companies that are within 50 miles of wherever you are in practice. And the goal is to contact the human resource manager because for a business, it's the human resource manager that makes the referrals. And you know in advance that if the business is mandating that the person is going to come, they will likely come and participate and be cooperative because otherwise they will lose their job. And the second part of it, you know that they're going to pay because they're employed and so that that's the way businesses operate. Now, I noticed that two of you already are from nonprofits, and that's fine. I don't know anything at all about nonprofits, but I do know about for-profit. So uh, the very first referral that we received since 1997, the very first referral that we received from a company was from UPS. UPS is nationwide. And so that it was two African-American men who worked for UPS actually in West LA, loading and unloading trucks. And so that one guy reports 
that he uh, loaned another guy at the office or the business, let's say $1,000. And after two years, he still had not been paid back. So the guy who had borrowed the money doing break one day said, oh, dudes, come outside during the break. I want to show you my new ride. And what he was referring to is that this guy had bought him a new Dodge truck. And so the other guy got angry and he said, you owe me a thousand dollars and you didn't pay me and you bought a truck. And so it was getting ready to have a, a fight. And someone called um, security. Security came and called UPS. And what UPS, excuse me, call HR. Security came, called HR. HR call, came over and says, both of you um, have to vacate the premises and then call back, and they did. So they said, okay, we're going to order you to complete an anger management class, and you cannot return to work until you complete the class. So then the HR manager called me, and she said, I have two referrals from you, and then she told me the story. And so she says to me, how long is the program? I said, the program, if it's not a serious issue, it would be um, 12 sessions. If it's something that is considered serious, then it would be six months. And so she says, no, we can't do that. And I says, why? She says, our rules at UPS are, if you're going to have a person miss work for more than a certain number of uh, days, I don't know what it was, six months or whatever, you have to terminate them. And we're not interested in terminating these two employees at this point. I said, this is the first time that I received a referral from a company. Recording in progress. So you tell me what is reasonable. And I said, here's the suggestion. I said, the minimum is 12 hours. Otherwise, it's not even worth it. So I said, we can have 12 hours. And I can see both of them separately. And I can see one 12 hours on one Saturday and then 12 hours on the next Saturday. And they both would have completed in, tw in uh, two weeks. And she says, go for it. And so that that's how we got UPS. This story is important because right now, when you finish this class, you should contact and start looking uh, on the internet for locations of HR managers just from UPS and began uh, marketing with help, for example, of uh, Raj to UPS regarding your program. This is after you've established your website uh, and so on. Are the questions so far just about that paragraph? Okay. Then Raj, take us to group facilitation. It's on the same page four, so they can see it. Mine is covered. Can everyone see the screen? Four. Group facilitation. It's covered, and so I can't see whether you, okay. Maybe you have a different version, but that's okay. Stick with the, can you make it possible so I mean, I can see it? The anger management facilitator's guide, the introduction. Go to the next paragraph after the introduction. Oh, I see. We're on page number four. Okay. Okay. The program, keep going. Now, okay, that's it. Group facilitation is what I want. I'm sorry, right? The group. Okay. Yeah, okay, the group. Group facilitation. Back down a little bit. The problem is that I can't see it because it's covered by something else. What I see, it says, yeah, the host, yeah.
No, that's okay. Can they see it? Can all of you see group facilitation? Okay, Lisa, can you see group facilitation? Okay, she can hear me. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go with group facilitation. This training program is intended to help participants understand how to effectively teach skills to enhance emotional intelligence, improve communication, and improve stress management and anger management skills. In addition, information regarding the establishment and maintenance of an anger management practice will be explored. Excuse me. The facilitation skills practiced in this training program will be useful to anyone if used over time, under supervision, or with consultation. Teachers, counselors, and correctional staff can use this model effectively, as can tutors in the literacy programs and group home staff. You don't have to be an expert facilitator yourself to conduct this program. Each group can and should serve as a learning experience that increases the competency of the leader. Group facilitation can be thought of as a process aimed at helping clients to better understand their own and other people's behavior. In anger management, the process may be concerned with communication, anger, stress, or emotional intelligence. Progress in mastering these concepts is closely related to the development of mutual respect, trust, and acceptance, as opposed to aggressive interpersonal interaction. It is the responsibility of the facilitator to model this emotionally intelligent behavior necessary to establish a well-functioning, cohesive group. The effective facilitator keeps the group focused on the task of the day. He or she guides group discussion by focusing on the workbook content, deferring the group from unrelated issues. Prior to the end of each session, the facilitator should ask for questions to summarize the session and gives the assignment for the next meeting. If no assignment is given, the participants should be reminded to keep a stress or anger log and be prepared to share this information in the next class. Now on the next page five, there should be um, an attendance sheet. You don't have to use this, but for this particular training, we try to include everything that you need for your anger management group to get you started. So if you're just starting, I suggest that you simply copy and put the names of your organization on it, the attendance sheet. The reason is you don't want a client to come to class and say, how many more sessions do I have? Because it's a waste of group time. And it's also a diversion tactic in which they use that as a way of manipulating. Are there questions, anything that I've asked or said so far? Diane? Not yet, no. Okay. And no, so, I'm, Nick, go ahead. No, okay. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay. On the next page is another simple uh, sample, excuse me, of an authorization form. And so that keep in mind when people are mandated, like whether they're coming from the court, probation, parole, children's services, it doesn't matter. If they're mandated, you have to sign, have them sign something like this. It's called an authorization for release. The reason is in order for the person who referred you to get in, refer to them to get information back regarding whether or not they're attending, paying their fees, cooperating, and so on. There has to be something in writing in your file that shows that you have permission to do that. Does that make sense, Diane? Yes. Okay. So uh, there again, just make a copy of this and uh, use this as a guide for you. Next, Diane, I want you to read uh, until you get tired the next two pages, and that's on six, size and composition of the group, and seven, which uh, will take you down to um, group content, and then I'll take over again. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> size and composition. The most manageable size for an anger management group is 12 to 15. 
However, it is sometimes necessary to lead groups larger than 15. Large groups are more likely to occur in settings like prisons, juvenile halls, and overcrowded public schools. If faced with the prospects of leading a large group, it's important that the group rules are rigidly followed. The facilitator must also assume a more teacher-like, class-like focus. When possible, it is wise to use an intern or co-leader to assist in the group. Two facilitators are more effective in groups than larger than 15. For teens, the age of the client should be as possible. For example, middle school students should be seen in groups comprised only of middle school students. High school students should be seen in separate groups. It is not workable to place a 13-year-old in a group with a 17-year-old. The developmental issues being addressed are too different. Physical setting. The physical setting is less important than the climate produced by the leader. Participants can be seated around a table or in a circle or a simple circle. No barriers should be placed between the facilitator and the group. In any case, the members should be able to see each other and there should be no authority implied by the seating arrangements, such as having a leader seated at the head of the table or behind the desk. To the extent possible, respect should be demonstrated to the group members by providing a meeting place that shows seriousness and care. Posters containing the contrasting wheels of behavior are excellent as framed wall hangings. Each classroom should contain a combination VHS TV monitor as well as a chalkboard. Okay, hold on uh, for just a second. Staying with what we were just covering, what happened was we had the pandemic and everything changed regarding these types of services worldwide. So now, what everyone is doing, and you will do the same, is offer your classes the way I'm offering this training, virtually. And so that means that instead of having only clients from New Jersey, you can have clients from anywhere. It doesn't matter as long as the organization or the person is interested in uh, taking your class and it can be uh, convenient for them. For example, I'm now 85 and largest contract that I've ever had single. I got during the uh, COVID and that was providing executive coaching for physicians at one medical school and 10 hospitals in Saudi Arabia. And of course, all that is done um, virtually via Zoom. So the uh, next uh, thing that I would tell you is that this is something that has never been done before, which is decide to use emotional intelligence as a theoretical base for anger management. And so that, did each of you receive a copy of um, a little card that's blue on one side and red on the other side? It's called Contrasting Wheels of Behavior, Diane? Yes, I have it. Okay, and um, Lisa, you have it also? Yes, I'm looking for it now. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. It's going to be a little difficult, um, Raj. But now what I need you to do is, do you have access also to the content of either of the client workbooks? It may be, and so that what may be easier 
And let's go with the uh, adult one. It's called controlling ourselves. Well, if you're going to do gain control, that's okay. I'll get that one. That's the adolescent. It's fine. Hold on. Okay, I'm lost, y'all. Can y'all help me where we at? <laughs> Is that on the card he was just talking about? It's a book. And oh, so it's that, a book. Okay. Yeah. So, it's a one, so one book would be gaining okay, control of ourselves. Which is an adult book. Why don't we do that? Okay. The reason okay. is that I'm going to show you how that is used because it's very important. Donna didn't sign up until yesterday, so she doesn't have anything because she and I discussed this on phone was sending all the material to her, but it wasn't feasible or possible. Um, yes, I, I, uh, hello everybody. No, I, I understand that, but I'm just letting, I was just whoever was needed to know that. That's why I said that, but no, I understand. I have nothing. I keep, that's why I came to my sister's this morning and I'm late because of traffic because the, she has the book that you told me I need it. And yeah. I'm here with the book now, okay. but that's the so key thing I have. I have, have is... no other materials. I have um, nothing else. You said that you were going to mail all that to me. I'm going to, as I promised. Okay. But so yes. what I'd like okay. you to do then. Just wanted to, I, you did explain that to me. Yes, you did. Okay. So Raj, if you have the book, I'd like for you to turn to page number, excuse me, 10. Okay. Page number 10. You know, I'm I'm not in a hurry. Oh, I am always in a hurry. <laughs> It's a problem. <laughs> That's it. I like it. That's it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sit with that. Okay, then. And so the, here's what I want to explain uh, to each of you. This was developed by Anderson and Anderson. And so that on the first page is called Positive Wheel. And at the top, it says, the wheels which appear below are the anchors to this anger management workbook. They can and should be referred to when focusing on or practicing positive skills of interaction. They are also a quick reference for recognizing styles of interaction. They're also a quick reference for recognizing styles of speaking, aggressive behavior and habit patterns which make healthy relationships difficult. Tools for increasing emotional intelligence must be incorporated in mastering the spokes on the positive wheel. Each participant's control log will be analyzed by the group or the coach during the first or second session. These wheels will also be used in many ways throughout the program. So on the positive wheel, I'd like for anyone who can see it just to read out, starting with active listening and going around what is listed. Donna, can you see it? Yes. What did you want us to do to read it? Yeah. I see it. Okay. I, in fact, I got a more interesting way of doing it. Donna. Yes. Each one, after you read, starting with active listening, you pause, and then let me give you the definition. Okay. Got that? Active so start. Active listening. Okay. So don't do it now, but know that in your oh. book, on page 14, it says active listening, listening with both oh, your heart page. and your head. 
don't have to go there right now. You got the book or you will have the book. Yes, I have the book. So what does listening with your heart and head mean? It means as you're listening, you're trying to discern how is she or he feeling while he or she is speaking. For example, this is a real example. I had a patient, a doctor from Alaska. All of our sessions was before we had Zoom. They were by phone. And so I'm meeting with the doctor and something didn't seem right. I said, doctor, have you been drinking? That was a long pause. And he says, yes. And I said, well, I'm going to have to refer you to Betty Ford. Betty Ford is a substance abuse treatment program, primarily for super professionals, most especially physicians is based in Palm Springs. So I said, I can't be useful to you at all if you're still drinking. And so that this is it. So he had to go to Betty Ford. But what did I do? I used my skills to say something is wrong here. It didn't feel right. Okay, that was with my heart. Okay. So go to the next one. Can I do the next one? Yeah, go ahead. Focusing. Focusing. Yeah. Keeping the conversation of the topic of the moment. So you don't move around. You stick with it. If you ask a group of questions and you say, oh, focusing. You can, they can say whatever they want, but you bring them right back. That's not focusing. Let's stick with focusing. Okay, go to the next one. Is that page 14? We're sticking with the same thing, yeah. We're just going through okay. the list. No, okay. I, I'm on page 14. I'm on a will. But I want yeah, I'm on a will. Yeah, I'm on page 10. Okay. So go, go to the next one. Speaking <laughs> compromise. Yeah. Okay. Using empathy and common sense to try and meet the other person halfway in order to achieve a win for both parties. Keep in mind, this is not just random stuff. This is what we want to teach the people to do in the class. Okay, so the next one. Rephrasing? Yeah. Rephrasing. Attempting to clarify what has been said and repeating in your own words what you understand is intended by the speaker. Go to the next one. Rephrasing. We just did rephrasing. Attempting to clarify what has been said by repeating in your own words what you understand is intended by the li listener. Go ahead. Honest feedback? Yes. Simply letting the speaker know how you feel and think about what has been said. Next. Expressing feelings. Sharing with the speaker what feeling is triggered by his or her comment. Next, we're only going to do two. Stating needs. Using simply a brief statement to let the speaker know what you need from him or her. Last one. Assertiveness. Consistently saying what you mean and meaning what you say with respect and empathy to the listener. So now let me go right away. I don't know whether we're with our outline or not, but it's logical. And so I'm going to do it and we can come back to any of the other material. So here's what I'd like for um, Raj to do is sticking with the same book, Raj, I want you to go to, let's see. Let's 
So in for a second. Okay. Page number um, 16. Excuse me, oh. Mr. Anderson. Go ahead. Uh -huh. It's me, Donna. Um, I have a question. Um, I know I came in a little late, but uh, this wheel that you're showing us, this book, that <laughs> this is a book that is for not only personal, but what we would use in conducting a class. A oh, yeah. No, I, can, I don't mind uh, repeating any of the things that I've said. So first of all, one of the unique things about what we do and why we have been so successful is that we learned from the research that we did in writing these books that in order to be effective, you have to have all of your material in a book and everyone had to use the book. And so it's like, I don't know anything about religion at all. But it's my understanding is that people who believe in religion study the Bible, if it's Christianity. And so that this is like the Bible. If there's no Bible, then we're wasting our time. And so that that's one thing. Secondly, we start off with the assessment. And so that in order to determine whether something works or at least whether the anger management is working or not, that's what the judge is like. And that's what people who pay bills like. Does it work? How do you know? So what you do is that once you take the initial assessment, when the person completes the class, to take the same identical assessment again, and then you look at the scores. Now, what it is that you're doing is called evidence-based. So that's a long answer to your question. Not only do you have to use this, but let's assume that you were um, providing uh, anger management for a school district. They wouldn't trust that you were doing the right things. They would have you lead the class after school, at school, and they will see everybody has a workbook. So if a student forgets his or her workbook, you loan them one that day. But if they lose the workbook, then the school has to buy another one, right? But so let me give you a live example. I got a call from a um, public defender. A public defender is an attorney who, uh, for people who go to court and they don't have an attorney or the ability to pay, the court will appoint an attorney to represent you. And so that a public defender called and she said, Anderson, it's my understanding that everyone who comes to classes that are mandated in LA County use your workbooks. Is that correct? And I said, yes. And she says, I have a complaint. And I said, go ahead. She says, I referred a client to one of your programs and I'll give you the name of it. And I said, yeah, that's important. And she says, not only do they not use your workbook, they don't use any workbooks at all. And so that, uh, Donna, what do you think I did? George Anderson. You called them up? And gave him <laughs> <laughs> of course I call him up. Anyway, I won't cheat. I call him up and I said to them, I just got off the phone with a public defender from Los Angeles uh, court. And she said, not only do you not use my books, you don't use any books. And I said, guess what? I'm removing your name from the list at my expense. And as long as I'm the vendor, you will never provide services in LA County again. What do you think, Donna? Am I a good person? <laughs> I, no, I, would say, oh, I, would, I would say you were doing your job. Okay, that's all I care about. <laughs> I'm doing my job. Okay, so this is something I tell you. So we're now on page number 16 in the adult client workbook. And so here's what I have to tell you. I mentioned it before, but I'm making more sense of it now. Anytime a person is mandated by a judge, there's something called a minute order. It's one page, and it tells you what the penal code is in terms of the offense, and then it tells you what the order is, which means the judge doesn't just uh, say to a person, you got to go to anger management. He is more precise or she than that. And so that you have to not make a, you have to make a copy of it 
and it has to be placed in the person's file. So you don't even think about it. You make a copy of it. And so that if the judge does not say the number of sessions to attend, it's automatically one year. And so if someone says the judge just said that I had to go, so I don't have to go but one time, you are nicer than I am, but you say bullshit. That's what I say. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> if the judge wants you to come one time, I'm sending you right back to the judge right now, and you tell him he has to put that in writing. You get it? And so that minute order determines yes. what the judge actually ordered. It's not informal. So let's assume that you're from UPS. The same person who made me those two referrals from UPS, I says, ma'am, you know, um, by law, I have to have you send me something in writing and you have to tell me that these people are being mandated. And since you and I have already agreed that we're going to do 12 sessions, then that's what is included by you. It has to be in the file. Because at any point, if the file is subpoenaed for whatever reason, there is a record and it has material in it. So what I have now is on page number 16, a sample of real human beings who were ordered to attend anger management. And I saw them myself. So that is nothing that I made up. You ask me any question that you want about the ones that we're going to select. And we obviously can't go over all of them. But Raj, the problem is it's 10 o'clock. So should I give you guys a break now for 10 minutes? Or should I do one of these and then come back for 10 minutes? Do one and then come back. Oh, I like that. Who is that speaking? Donna. Donna, you know one thing? I figured it out. I believe you're going to buy Anderson and Anderson, but you're going to have to work with Rod. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, Rod, don't you cheat. I want you to read at the top where it says sample control log entries on page number 16. Is Rod still there? Yeah. Yeah. No, don't read the example. Read what comes before the example first. Yeah. The whole thing plus the example. Yeah. No Okay, so now you see in that example, we're starting off by letting you know that we don't just do things. And so we say, we want you to think about your own results so that it comes alive when you can see how it, it is related to everyone who comes to our program. So Raj, I want you, I think I want to read this next one because this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, first of all, and I'll tell you the story. This man lives in Westwood. Westwood is where UCLA is. And so for my friend in New Jersey, uh, Lisa, Westwood is located in a very exclusive community. And so that to the north of Westwood is Bel Air. To the east of Westwood is Beverly Hills. To the south of West Los Angeles. And to the west is Brentwood. And so it's like Z in there is everywhere you look. Okay. So this guy, you know, right away is unfortunately, no, I shouldn't say it that way. Anyway, 
this guy is successful, I wouldn't be able to live there. So I'm going to read it. Situation one. I drive 40 miles each way to work on the worst freeway in the state, the 405. My job is very stressful. I have been stressed a lot over the last two years. One night I became angry with my daughter and smashed the monitor of her computer. My wife panicked and demanded that I go for anger management beliefs. I simply can't justify my action. I am stressed to the max feelings. I don't even think the issue is my daughter. I was frustrated over the bind that I'm in. I have a high income. I don't want to move and I hate to drive. Cost of anger, respect for myself, past violence, none. Alternatives. I should have told my daughter that I was in a bad mood and need her to do what I'm asked. Okay. So now I want you to go back to the wheel page now on um, number um, 11, right? That's the negative wheel. And it says at the top, this negative wheel helps link the, the different behaviors and form a pattern of communication, miscommunication. It shows the relationship as a whole and how each seemingly unrelated behavior is an important part of an overall effort to dominate a situation or someone else. And so that now what I ask anyone, just uh, answer. On the positive wheel, start anywhere you want and let me know which one of these folks, are, and it could be many of them, but do one at a time. Or may I do it differently? Is there any evidence that hostility was exhibited by this doc, this man? Anyone? Yes. Okay. Give the example. He smashed sure. the computer monitor. Are you still speaking? Hello, can you hear me? No, no, please. Go ahead. You said, it. did he give an example? Yeah, yeah, we're sticking with this guy. Show me how he used hostility or how hostility was view, seen. By smashing her computer monitor? Yeah. So, okay, what about rage? Yeah. <laughs> Aha. And you're laughing. Why? <laughs> because when you're in a rage, you want to smash stuff. <laughs> yeah. But let me ask you something. What happens to your brain when you're in this fit of rage? I'm sorry. What happens to it? To your brain. Can you think clearly? No. Ah. Oh. Okay. Who else would help me out now? Did anyone, Lisa, do you see avoidance, interrupting, manipulation, controlling, intimidation, or inattention? Any of those? Can Lisa nope. hear me? On what page y'all on? <laughs> okay, we're on page number 11. Oh, y'all went back. Oh, okay. But we were talking about the same guy. And I had read to you, he smashed his daughter's mm -hmm. monitor, and he said that he was stressed to the max. So we were trying to figure out how did it uh, um, become a problem for him. And it became a problem for him because he smashed his uh, computer. And by the way, it wasn't a police who called. He wasn't mandated by anyone except his wife. And I'll tell you guys a story. In fact, I'll tell you now because I'm going to forget it. Have any of you guys heard of a famous guy who was a musician? His name was Lou Rawls? Yes. yes. He was one of my clients. And he was one of my favorites. Said, Wait a minute. His wife said, you either go to anger management or I'm out of here. And if I leave, I'm going to take everything I can get. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why I thought of that. That's manipulation. He's dead, so it's not confidential. Okay. Uh, That's a manipulation. I was thinking about the story you read. Okay, that's good. Okay, in the interest of time, what I will do is tell you um, – what else happened to this particular case, and then we'll take uh, a break. One, uh, I have a question. Go ahead. 
um, I don't know the young lady that spoke, but um, where would the manipulation be from the the wife's part? Yes. Our client is always a person who was mandated to come. His wife, I've never saw. I never saw her. No, no, no. She, um, the the young lady that spoke, because she said uh, man, uh, she saw the manipulation. But would that be considered manipulation if the wife gave him an ultimatum? No, oh, the answer is no, because oh, no. She, she's not the subject of our group. No, I understand, but she had. She said that the wife was. Um, I'm just trying to understand. Oh, the story, the story that you read, the first story that you read. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't read. catch that. And so that was the mistake on my part of not saying the wife is not in the program. And so that she may uh, be manipulating, but that's not how this is to be used. We, we okay, okay. So. In other words, she, by her giving him the ultimatum, it's not a, a trait of manipulation. It's it's an ultimatum. Either you do what you you should do or you're out. Right? You can say that. Yeah, I was just telling you what I what I was trying to what I was trying to do. Okay, to let's, say, let's go back to most <laughs> most people who come to anger management are mandated by some uh, organization. HR is what I said, or courts or children's services or probation parole, and so on. In this particular case, it was just a family. And it's the same thing. I saw a young guy whose mother is a judge and his dad is an attorney. So his, her son didn't get in trouble, but the judge called me herself because she was aware of what I did. And she said, I need you to help my son. And she said, he is so aggressive. He's a football player. But even the kids at school say that he never lets up. I mean, he's, he's aggressive and difficult all the time. And my husband and I want him help. And so that's all I was saying is that this was an atypical kind of referral. The other thing that I haven't made clear is that the very first meeting that we have with each client, we have them fill out what's called a control log. And I'll show you one uh, later. But the control log asks these uh, questions. It's on page number nine. And the questions are, Briefly describe the incident that resulted in your referral to the program. This is what you asked the client. What did you want to have in the situation? Right? And so the guy explained to us, what did he explain again? If you look at what actually happened, I can't find it. But in any case, he explained it, right? And then it says, what caused you to think your actions would get the results you wanted? What feelings were you having? Did you attempt to make light of your role in the situation? Did you attempt to blame someone or something else? What was the impact of your action on you, on others? Did any past explosive incidents, violence, or aggression on your part affect this situation? What could you have done differently? Does that make sense? Everything is really tightly uh, looked at in this model. So we don't sit around and chat. Every second is meaningful. Okay. So this is what happened. After the guy, which is what we do all the time, every time there's a new person coming to the class, we start off by introducing, not him or her, but you go around the room and everyone introduces him or herself. And then the, the new person goes last. And in introducing himself, he actually reads his control law. And while he's reading it, the class is looking at the uh, negative wheel and the positive wheel. And so that in this particular case, that's what we deal with this guy. And then I said to him, have you ever, I said, who do you report to? He says, I'm the vice president. I report to the president. He says, I work for an advertising agency. Whoa, is what I said. And so I said, have you told the president that the commute was a problem for you. His answer, everyone knows that I live in Westwood. Everyone knows I'm not moving to Orange County. Everyone knows I hate to drive. So I'm asking all of you, did he answer my question? No. Of course not. And so I said, I would like to give you an assignment. 
I would like for you to look at page number, whatever it is, to the left, 10. And I'd like for you to use assertive communication to state your needs and select anything else that you want in your conversation with the president. And you report back to us next week. The guy comes back the next week, he raises his hand, and he said, I feel like an idiot. And I said, oh. He says, I met with the president, and I said, Bob, this drive is killing me. And he says, the president says, oh, you don't have to come every day. You can telecommute three days, and excuse me, two days, and, and uh, work from home. And he said, and you don't have to come at nine. You can come at 11 and you can leave at three. Guess what I said? Sir, you are an idiot. <laughs> you see how easy that was? What happened? Raj, can anybody hear me? Okay, but what he used was assertive communication. But the point was, had he been assertive years before, he could have gotten what he was asking for then, don't you think? Yes. Anyway, if you're in a nonprofit, you may think that you lost a client and you don't care because it's nonprofit anyway, right? Because we had solved his problem, didn't we? But he was paying me, and so I said, oh, my goodness, he's probably not coming back. But he did. He came back, and he's one of the best students that I had. So any questions so far on anything that we've covered? Because I'm going to give no. you this. Huh? No. Okay. Take a 10-minute break. Okay, thank Raj for being so patient. I'm intimidated with mechanical things. And so I got a funny story to tell you. I grew up in a very large family. I have five brothers and three sisters, and I'm the youngest. And my father owned a construction company. And so that he used to specialize during World War II building military barracks all over the United States. And then he later built churches, but he always built some houses. But so all of my four brothers were able to do anything that a carpenter, an electrician, or a plumber, a builder could do. I could not do anything. So at about 11 o'clock every day, when I was trying to work with my dad, he said, you better go to college. I see you're not going to be able to make it. <laughs> but I still can't do anything. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thanks so much.
No, I'm not going to leave the laptop just. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, plug it up. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that right now. Hello, hello. It's George Anderson. I'm doing good. You know, this is my training day. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're taking a break. So I wanted to get from you. Ah. Whoa. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be really good. We're having a training uh, right now. So this is the first day. Yeah. <laughs> George, you need to mute yourself. Okay. Recording stopped.